Hi everyone, Judith from the Vegan Vegetarian Foodie Network and today I'm making a fermented bean dip. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered is I love fermented pumpkin, squash, potatoes, um, pretty much every vegetable under the sun. And I love beans. However, I don't like all the gas byproduct from eating cooked beans, which is typically why I like to sprout and soak and either if they're mung beans lightly cook or if they're a larger bean like a fava bean I tend to cook them till they're like really soft and then I like to ferment them and that really helps to break down the um, proteins and all the other material, I don't even know what it is that makes beans so gassy in our stomach, I haven't done the research on that. Uh, but I don't like all that gas and gas byproduct. So I find that by sprouting, soaking, and fermenting beans, I have a much better experience of them. And I love hummus. Uh, my husband Don loves hummus. I love beet hummus, uh, squash hummus, zucchini hummus. So today I've decided to make a potato squash pinto bean hummus. So come, I'll show you the ingredients and how to make it. So this particular recipe starts with pinto beans. Now I have, um, I tend to like to use dried beans and legumes for everything that I create. So I have some dried pinto beans which I sprouted. First I soaked, then I sprouted, and then I cooked and I have fermented in a salt water water kefir brine. So for this jar, um, as you can see I three quarter filled it with the beans. I added a tablespoon of salt. I filled it to about here with water and added probably about a quarter cup of water kefir, finished water kefir. And I've let this sit uh, out on the counter for three to five days and then put it in my cold room and it's been in my cold room for approximately two weeks. So you can see all the bubbles up there, nicely fermented. Now here is the other ingredient, and this is a combination of butternut squash. I love butternut squash. I, anyway, in soups, bake it, in, I just, I love butternut squash, all squashes. So this is a particular butternut squash, and just your basic potato. Now you can add a sweet potato to this, you can add any squash, acorn squash, um, spaghetti squash is different, although you can still, you can ferment spaghetti squash as well. Uh, and all the other different types of squashes and with sweet potato, uh, yam, potato in place of white potato. Um, so I like white potatoes, I love white potatoes, uh, just not really keen on um, certain, there's lectins and things in there that don't always agree with me. So I find that fermenting uh, potatoes tends to be a, again a better experience for me. So I've decided to make a blend of the squash and the potatoes and you can see nice and bubbly again, right? So same concept as with the beans. I put a tablespoon of salt. I filled it up to about here with water, just your basic artesian spring water. And then I added a quarter cup of water kefir. Again, I left this out for three to five days and then put it in the cold room for, it's only been there for probably two days, maybe three days, so less than a week. Now I'm going to make a hummus, a fermented hummus, using these two ferments and I also have, instead of using a, a regular raw garlic, uh, unfermented garlic is what I should say, I have um, some of my fermented garlic that I made, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago. Uh, that have been in my fridge and I'm going to add some black pepper and salt and some tahini uh, which is um, ground sesame ground sesame butter and I might add a spice in here we'll see I'm going to drain these and 
put them in my little mini food processor and we'll go from there. For the purpose of this recipe, we're only going to use a cup of these beans. And now I'm going to add a cup of the fermented squash and potato without the liquid for now. So you know that potatoes and squash have a nice sweet taste um, when they're cooked. Fermenting takes out that sweet taste so this is going to be a bit of a and that's like all fermented foods it will be um, more on the sour side. If you don't if you want to create this with just the fermented beans um, and just want to add say a, a, a cooked unfermented sweet potato and squash that's fine too. Um, just know that when you put in your your fridge, the longer it sits either out in the counter or in your fridge, it will ferment. And so eventually the sweetness of the um, squash and or potato will start to sour. We're going to add some pepper and some salt now. About a teaspoon to start with. If you are on a sodium restricted diet, you might wish to substitute salt with crushed celery seeds, um, onion powder, um, or a, a salt substitute such as Mrs. Dash or there's a lot of different salt substitutes that you can find out there. Also um, seaweed, so ground dulse or ground or even flake dulse or um, ground, um, what's the other one? Kelp. I was trying to figure out what it was. So dulse or kelp, you can add that as well. And so I am going to add just a little bit of the kelp and the dulse. If you're going to use just um, regular garlic, uh, garlic is a preference of taste. Uh, start with one garlic clove if you're not really keen on garlic. If you like lots, add four, five, six. Because um, when you ferment garlic, it tends to change the taste of it, I'm going to add a couple small teaspoons. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of the liquid as well. And now we're going to add approximately a half cup, quarter cup to a half cup of the tahini. So this is a quarter cup measuring spoon that I have. I made a huge mess here. And I'll start with just a quarter cup and we'll blend that and uh, if we need more, we'll add more. Okay, wow, that's, um, that's smooth. And it's delicious, exactly like that. This is, um, when it's finished like this, when you add the tahini, it doesn't taste as sour. It basically just tastes like a regular hummus. Very light, very, um, yeah, light and, and yummy in the, in the palate, on the palate. If you're looking for uh, fermented garlic, I created a, a video on that earlier. You can find that if you go down the, the history of my videos. So that's today's recipe, real simple, real easy and it's probiotic, it's fermented. It's awesome. Uh, if you want, you can add a little extra seasoning in here, maybe some oregano, some thyme, some uh, herb de mare, but as I said, I tasted this. It's absolutely delicious exactly as it is. Although we did use uh, pinto beans in this, please keep in mind you can use any, any um, fermented bean in a hummus or bean dip. So that's white canelli beans, you know, the white kidney beans, or you can use red kidney beans, fava beans, you can use lima beans, um, romano beans, uh, black eyed peas. Um, you could probably even make this with lentils, the different types of lentils as well. Um, so get creative and uh, you might surprise yourself. 
Now, how would you eat this? Uh, I love to put this on um, toast in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening, uh, whether that's sourdough made from sourdough bread or just regular bread. Uh, I also like to put it on uh, romaine lettuce leaves or Boston lettuce leaves um, and make a wrap. I'll add other fermented or not fermented vegetables with it. Although typically I like it with the other fermented vegetables such as kraut and f fermented pickles. Um, you can also put it in um, tortillas um, and make it into a burrito. Um, you might want to add some hot spices to it, of course. Uh, you can also use it in raw lettuce wrap, or sorry, raw wraps. Um, and I've created a video on that so you can find how to make raw wraps as well. And of course, you can always use it as um, a dip for tortilla chips or, you know, um, nan chips or anything like that, pita, pita wedge chips. You can serve it on crostinis. Uh, basically anywhere that you would use a dip or a spread or some sort of bean sauce. You can thin this out and add it to uh, make a pasta sauce with it as well. So just some ways to, to get you started on how to, to eat this. So out of curiosity, what other things can you do with fermented squash and potato? Uh, I'm sure all of you by now have heard of uh, Vichy Schwartz cold soup. So you, if you like cold soup, you can um, take this and add a little bit of um, for those of you that do not consume dairy, you can add coconut milk or you can add uh, water and a little bit of dairy. And you can make um, a cream of Vichy Schwa soup, right? Or a cream of a Vichy Schwa, of cream, cold cream of um, pumpkin or squash, potato, whatever, whatever, um, the, whatever it is that you're using in here. And uh, if that's a nice treat. Um, when it's a, a hot day and you want a soup but you don't want it hot you want it cold so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed this and i look forward to seeing you in the next video